Luke chapter 17, the disciples, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would, it would obey you. Wow. Jesus said, it's make it so easy. As long as you have faith, you can speak to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and it shall be done. Just like that. It sounds over simplistic. Okay, so we got to, but it, it, it shows that faith is so at, of utmost important to us. If we have done our faith, then we can't do anything. So this is really encouraging. God is, you know, it is, God is telling us, the Lord is telling us that don't give up. Have faith in me. Do you know? So, I mean, verse 5 is out of the blue. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. You know why did they say that? It's because the Lord seems to be. This is a very epitome of faith. Jesus is the very definition of faith. He does not need faith. He is the object of faith. Tim Keller or somebody has said this. It's not how big your faith is. It's the object of your faith. I disagree, actually. You need to have both. I agree that the object of faith is the most important. But the size of your faith is also of secondary importance. So ESV Study Bible says, Jesus replied in the case that even a very small amount of faith, if it is genuine trust in God, can lead to remarkable results. Just the issue is not the size of faith, but its presence. What it's saying is that if you have genuine trust in God, it could be not a lot of faith, but it can grow. Grow to a size that you can take down a mulberry tree. So the point Jesus is trying to teach us is that don't worry about how big your faith is. As long as you have faith. You see, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, mustard seed is the smallest seed. So Jesus said, even if you have the smallest faith, you have the potential of commanding this tree to be moved, it shall be done. That is a potential. In God's will or not, and all this stuff. Of course, you go to read through across the Bible to, to dovetail with every verse on, on the subject. But make it simple. The simplicity of faith, you trust in God. That's what I'm saying. You can just say, I trust in God. I don't see it now, but I trust in Him. Oh, how blessed is this. How blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. How blessed. You know, trust, faith, Hebrews 11. Faith is, is, is not seeing it now, but you believe it shall happen. And it shall happen. As long as it's in the will of God. If it is not, no matter how much faith you have, it will not happen because it's not in the will of God. So God will correct us and train us to be in line with His will. And then it will happen. You know, nothing is going to stop God from doing what He wants to do. So we just put our faith. Even if a little faith. Jesus said, if you have faith as a little, as a small, as a master's, and faith had a grain of master's seed, you could say to this mountain, be uprooted and it will obey you. Do you see that? So Jesus didn't say that if you have faith as this hill or this mountain, you can do that. When you have faith, it's big. You can do it, son. So he didn't say that. He said, if you have, a, have if, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, such small. Do you know how small is mustard seed? Okay, let's take an example, okay? I'm in the field now. Okay, let's just take a small example. Okay, this... This small little leaf here. If you have faith, there's this little master seed. This is a small leaf. Just a small, tiny one. You could. You could. Potentially. It can, what it says, it could grow out to be so big and, and make things happen. Move a tree. That is trust in God. Faith, the, the, my favorite word for faith in God is to trust in God. If you trust in Him, He may not do it now, but He will do it later. 
or it may not do exactly the way you asked for, he may change it. And it's fine, he's the Lord. But important thing is, we got to hold on to that faith. If you don't have that faith, Master C, for example, I want to see restoration in the, in the lives of my loved ones, for example. The needle has not moved yet. Sometimes I thought I saw it moved a little bit. Sometimes it did. Actually, it has moved a little, quite a bit. But it's far from the goal. But my master see keeps me going. I keep at it. Okay? Our problem is when we ask. You ask by faith. And you believe to do the will of God. Everything seems to line up. It just doesn't happen. There's so many reasons. And you know, when it doesn't happen, it hurts our faith. That's a reality. It, it, our faith sort of diminished, drops. But that's a test, the test of the rubber. When the rubber hits the road, the real test comes in. You know, when, how do you feel? Do you give up? Do you get discouraged? And then you encourage yourself in the Lord. That's what half of the book of Psalms is. If you don't get into Psalms, how do you be like, man, a great man of God like David? Half of the times he's discouraged, <laughs> distressed, running for his life. And because of the half of the time, he's experiencing victory. Hallelujah. He's experiencing the, the great faith. God moving great power and signs and wonders. When he was pursued by Saul, King Saul, who wanted to kill him so many times, God gave him victory. Hallelujah. Philistines or Philistines again and again. There's so much victory because of distress and discouragement. Distress and discouragement actually draw you closer to God. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, they're very good. That's why James say, treat, you know, all the uh, trials and temptations are very good for our soul. And we can make it happen, make it even better. That little seed of faith can grow. Let it grow. Let it grow, baby. Trust in God. And God will do. Pull it off. For the best ever is yet to come.